Hey, if you've heard of Scrivener, but its complexity kind of intimidates you, then you're in luck. I'm going to be breaking down Scrivener into little digestible bites so you can maximize the software to write amazing stories. Hey friends, let's talk about Scrivener. Today, the preferences behaviors tab. And by talk, I mean I talk and you leave comments down below. Ask me questions or tell me about your favorite Scrivener features. Preferences behavior tab. To get there, we're gonna come up here and we've already talked about general, we've already talked about editing, and now we're into behavior. So first things first, composition mode. So composition mode is kind of like a full screen, minimize distractions type of mode. Um, I'll show you a little bit, just Keep in mind that this this isn't my whole screen, so when I show you composition mode, it's gonna kind of um, cut off some stuff. But so here's full screen mode right here, and then composition. So I click on composition, and this yeah yeah I know I'm on typewriter is kind of what pops up. And um, on all sides there's nothing, so if I come over here, my my Mac my dock doesn't show up. Like it won't show up if I mouse over it. Up here there's this. Um, the top tab and then if I go all the way down to the bottom which you can't see because I have it cut off there's another if I mouse over it another little menu will pop up and that's basically like um, text scaling so if I want to zoom in I can have the inspector pop up and um, I can add in keywords from here as well to get out of here I just press the escape bar on my keyboard and we're back when um, if you have more than one monitor you can choose which monitor your composition mode will pop up on and then also whether you blank out other screens or not so if you want a completely distraction free experience blank out those other screens so that you can just focus on writing if you're using mac you will know that um, you may know about spaces if you don't check them out they're kind of neat i'm not going to cover them here this video is already way too long but the composition mode will open up in its own space so um, if you know about spaces and you're interested in that that's where you toggle it if you don't know about spaces or you don't care, let's move on. Fading between modes just makes it look kind of nice when you open it. Hiding the main window in composition mode. Um, yeah, it hides everything. Yeah, you could. And then um, the escape key closes it. And down here, this is the Mac, the dock. So um, mine's on my other side, but it's basically like the toolbar. And when you're in composition mode, you can either hide it permanently or you can make it so that when you kind of mouse over in that direction, it will pop up. Moving on to document links. When I talk about backlinks, that means that we're gonna open up some stuff. So for example, over here in scene, I have it linked to Mr. Bubbles, Fish Tank, Triple Fish, etc. And over here in Mr. Bubbles, it is linked to scene. And I didn't do this, so I linked it from scene over here to Mr. Bubbles. But Scrivener linked it from Mr. Bubbles back to scene. So backlinking creates these kind of circular links. And if you do not like that, this is where you turn that off. It does the same thing with image links. So if you do not want these circular links set up, then this is where you turn that up. Opening clicked document links in one of four places. So the current editor, the other editor, quick reference panel, or the copy holder. The editors are these things. This screen is selected right now. So this would be considered the current editor. Um, and then this would be considered the other editor. If I had this side clicked or selected, this would be the current editor and this would be the other editor. A quick reference panel or a copy holder. So to open something in the copy holder, which um, is basically kind of just another editor that pops up. It's a little bit different from an editor, but it looks like one. So I want to open it up in, I want to open the fish tank in the copy holder. So I'm going to right click, open, and then in copy holder. So open that up and see it kind of pops up as this little separate window. Now there's some differences. You can see the copy holder doesn't have like a target. You can't set that stuff. It won't track how many words are in it or pages or anything like that. It's not really for typing and editing and it's more for reference. So um, if I had this filled out, it would be the location. So I could really quick reference. Okay. What does it look like? What does it smell like? And it would all be right here. And then the quick reference pane, if I click this, it will pop this up. So this is my quick reference pane. Um, and I can drag it around and I can move it um, to be next to the Scrivener. It's just a, yet another way to kind of keep track of stuff. You can 
open up a bunch of stuff in one of those different things. So there's a document link within my text. Then when I click on that right now, it's set to open up in the other editor. So if I had a link over here and I clicked on it, it would open up in this editor right here. Um, I can set it to open up for whatever I want though. So new document links and then inspector bookmarks, they'll um, open up in the quick reference panel. If I dislike that, they all kind of are the same thing. Basically this one, you get the do not option, do not open option here. All right, moving on. So double clicking and this is the cork board. So I'm in the cork board I'll be right here and I double click and nothing happens. I'm double clicking, nothing is happening. So now I'm going to go back here and I'm going to, well, creating a new card. I feel like that's pretty self-explanatory, so I don't need to demonstrate that. But opening the parent cork board. So right now I'm in books right here. And if I double click, it pops me up to part one, books are great because this is the parent cork board for books. So if you find yourself using the cork board and needing that kind of feature, this is where you turn that on. And I usually do does nothing just because that's how I am. Freeform mode and arranging by label. All right, so I'm in here. If I go to view and then cork board options. So this says arrange by plot point, but it should say arrange by label because I changed my labels to read plot point. So if I arrange by label, click on that, it arranges it like this. It's kind of in this like timeline type thing. So if that's, if that's a good way for you to work, then that's how you turn that on. View, cork board options. And you can arrange it in rows, how I have it right now, or we can do columns up and down. Um, and then freeform, take that off. Freeform view, like it mentioned, is right here. And this is, you can just kind of drag these around wherever you want. But if you don't like that, and if you want it to be a little bit more organized, turn off freeform and it will snap to this grid. Dragging and dropping. If you're over in the binder and you're dragging and dropping things around, and if you have this checked and you do option and drag, it will not just drag the scene, it will create a duplicate. So if you want a fast and easy way to create duplicate scenes, so I click on that and I hold down option and I drag it down here and it has created that duplicate. So I have this first one and then the second one. So I duplicated it. And then um, in this particular option, the collapse auto expanded outline. So let me put that down. Let's say I'm trying to figure out where I want to put my this scene. And so I bring it up here and hover over and this will auto expand out. And then I say, no, I don't want to put it in there. So I come back down here and drop it. And now that will auto collapse itself. And that's that option. Um, allow drop-ons and corkboard. What this means is, so I moved this, it was nested under um, scene two. So if I want to put it back, that mode that I have, so allowing drop-ons in the corkboard, grab this and I drag this over, get this plus sign and I drop it and it adds it as a child document in here. And you have to have that checked on here because generally speaking, see I'm dragging this around and see I don't get that plus sign and it just moves it to a different place. Link to images dragged from binder into editor. So if I have an image over here and I click on it and I drag it into an editor, the default is that it will bring the, link, the whole image in and it will be a, an image in the middle of your text. But if you click on this, instead of linking the limit or having the image imported in, it will just link to it. So um, this could be handy if you don't want a bunch of big bulky images um, or if you're having, if, if your Shrivener is running slow or something. And then delete text dragged to other areas. I think this is kind of a neat feature to show you. So right now, if I highlight this and I drag it over here, it deletes it from this side, right? Back over, okay. But if I unselect this, and I drag this over here, it copies it over. It does not delete it from the original part. So if that is something that you have been wishing that you could do, um, but you haven't been able to, this is where you disable it. It's default checked to delete, but if you want to drag stuff and not delete it, then come on over down here to folders and files. Um, this treat all documents with sub documents as folders. That's this right here. These documents, 
that have sub documents. If I click this, then they're treated as folders. Um, and this is mostly kind of like back end metadata type uh, level things. Like you won't, when I click on this, you don't see any change over here. But if I have certain other preferences enabled or disabled, then you would notice changes there. But for now, you're not going to see anything, but that's kind of what that means. And include closing folder text in Scrivening's mode. So this is Scrivening's mode right here. I'm in Scrivening's. So we can see over here, I'm selected into this folder and include enclosing folder text in Scrivening's mode. So in closing folder, this is the text. And in general, if I click this, it should toggle it off, but I have done something else and I can't remember what I did to make this permanent. But the default, you should be able to click this off and then that will disappear. I did something, so that's that's my bad. Um, whatever, moving on. Show folder text when selected from search results. So in here, if we search for dialogue, this pops up. Nothing is working how it should because I've done something, I've messed something up, but anyway, those are supposed to show up. In the, over in the binder, always create new items as siblings. You can check that to have everything show up as a sibling versus um, a, a child or on the same level. And then always set the title of a new item. And this, what this will do is I come over here and I hit plus sign, then this will automatically be in here and forcing me to type. Whereas um, default, it doesn't do that. So navigation, when the focused editor is locked in place, binder selection affects the other editor. If I lock this in place and to lock this in place, I'm going to right click up here and lock in place. So now this editor is locked. So if I, when the focus editor is locked in place and I select something in the binder, it's going to affect the other editor, but I could also select it to do nothing. So right now, I'm over here, even though I am selected in here, and I'm going to click on CV, and it pops up over here. So even though I'm selected here, so too, it only affects this other editor because this one is locked in place. Or I can change it so that if this is locked in place and I click over here, then nothing happens. Like this doesn't change, that doesn't change, nothing changes. And automatically load web pages in the bookmarks preview. So over here in the bookmarks preview, so you can see right here, it makes me click on the button to load the web page. And that's just to save. Um, kind of processing speed, but also because Scrivener is not a dedicated web browser and so there might be some like security issues um, if it's just non-stop loading and loading and loading. So you only load it when you need it. And allowing limited navigation in web pages is similar to that. It's for like security and, and, um, and processing speed. So using a space key, open selected documents in for the editor, the quick reference panel, if you open a space key, that will open whatever document you are selected to. All right, the outliner. So if we're in the outliner view right here, um, and you can see the notes down here. So let me do my notes. So as I'm typing, blah, 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 this will automatically get bigger, right? But if I have this disabled, then what will happen is that, and it won't do it live, it'll just scroll that up and then once you enter it in it will pop it live and i guess that that can be a problem it can glitch out on some people or it can cause processing speed problems so if you're experiencing issues when you're typing out in these for the auto expand then come in here and disable it and see if that helps playback you can have videos and other media in scrivener and this is just control that playback i don't have any uploaded right now but yeah that's where you would do that so return key this is kind of neat if you're in your corkboard and your outliner right now, when you hit the return key, it ends your editing of your synopsis. So it will just end it. So we're in the outliner right now. So as I'm typing and I hit enter, it just stops the editing. But if I click this off and I hit enter, now it enters down and I can keep going. I have to click out in order to set it. So that's what that is. And then creating a new item in a list, an outline, or corkboard views. So if I'm clicked right here and I hit enter, it opens up a new card. Oops. <laughs> and if 
I unclick this, then it will not do that. But I, I feel like you get the gist. All right, now snapshots. So you can play a shutter sound when your snapshots are taken or have a notification pop up. And if you have your snapshot to automatically take when, you know, upon opening or upon closing, then this might be handy just to remind you, hey, we take a snapshot. Um, also, if you find, if you have this on and you find that you're losing memory and speed and that kind of thing, um, this can be a reminder that, hey, maybe you have too many snapshots. <laughs> so maybe we should alter how many snapshots get taken. But yeah, that is the behaviors tab of the preferences window in a nutshell. And it's pretty robust, but um, you can see there's a lot of neat stuff in here as far as just little fiddly things that maybe you're used to in a different program and you're like, dang it, I wish that that was in Scrivener. Maybe it is and you just didn't realize it. So yeah, um, thanks for tuning into this video and I hope you learned something new about the behaviors options. Um, and if you like this video, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Wash your hands. Black Lives Matter. Have a nice day.